Okay, we're back. Um, this layout may look a little funny, so give me a second. I'm going to flip it to something you might be a little bit more familiar with. Everything looks good there. I'm also, I keep my layers docked here, but not for today. Although, you should, this might be a, a layers aware tool day. So, anyway, um, I'm going to click inside my perspective viewport, hold down Alt, and click W on the keyboard. And this just maximizes the viewport. And I'm going to, well, uh, Alt W again, get out of that. I'll go to my front viewport. And I want to just drag out a plane. Um, and since we made it 500 by 500, that means, like I said, it's a one to one scale, full scale. Uh, uh, Alright, let me take care of some OCD issues. You see this little white. Um, uh, I don't know what that is, uh, I don't know what they're called in Studio Max, but I can't stand them, I get rid of them, I'm notorious for trying to keep things neat, but, um, okay, so to get rid of that anyway, you hit J on the keyboard, and I do that to all my viewports as soon as I open up a file, or, well, my files usually already did that, but, you know, if I bring in an alien file, Alright, so we click on our plane. I'm going to just bring that down to one by one. And I want to make sure that's centered. So I'm just going to right click on the scroll arrows here. Um, now I'm going to enlarge it. I'm going to bring up my uh, material editor by hitting that button as a shortcut or you can hit M on the keyboard either way it doesn't matter so I'm going to click on this to get bitmap and I want to go to falling shells wherever you saved your um, JPEG at this is the one we just created So I'm just going to drag that onto there. Another way to do that is to just click this button here, assign material button, and click on this guy. It previews it in the window for you. So that looks about right as it should because we're at one to one scale. I'm going to close that and this is where I bring up the material, or not the material, the layers because I'm just like that. Um, Jeez, I hate wrecking my format. Alright, so we have this. Keep that selected and click on this. It represents your new layer. Create a new layer. And whatever is selected when you create a new layer will automatically go into the new layer. So I'm going to call this uh, ref underscore panel two ends EL. <coughs> I'm dyslexic in real life and a terrible speller, so if I ever spell something wrong, uh, my grammar is no better. Don't ride me out for that. So we see that plane. We should even rename that. Reference panel. It'll it'll update automatically in there. Or it should. Okay, there it goes. And let's go ahead and create another layer. And we will call this... Um, shells and in order to create um, not create but to work on whatever layer you just created you have to make sure it's checked off here in the front like if I wanted to add something to my reference panel layer I would have to make sure that that layer is checked to work on and of course you have the hide and freeze options uh, you can click on this and get the regular um, object property options so let's make sure that shells is uh, checked here. I'm going to get rid of that grid by hitting G on my keyboard. I'm going to close this. <coughs> I'm going to hit F3 in my front viewport. And I'm going to start creating with a spline. I'm going to show you two creation methods. Because this, this tutorial technically could be very, very short. 
and um, I didn't fix the the fish eye issue in Photoshop, and I what I didn't plan on it. So our thing is gonna look a little skewed now. And you have to remember this is hollow. So you can just quickly do it because we can always go back and fix it and tweak it. I hit uh, F3 on my keyboard again to take it back to the wireframe view. And this is raw tweak. Uh, F3, bring it out of that. Sorry if I, <laughs> I've been burping. I, I just had dinner recently. And I'm trying to uh, get as, mu as much of this as I can done um, before before um, my girlfriend gets home and I, you know, dedicate time to her and make that relationship work. Okay, so this is a little bit rounded here. And even this is a little bit... Um, Spherified. Uh, I don't. I don't know what you'd be looking for. It's it's bulging a little bit. We're not really going to worry about that. So I'm going to do this. I select both those uh, vertices. I'm going to right click and I want to go to. Where is my? There's my Bezier corner. So I can take that. Take that. So it's a little hard to grab sometimes. <clears throat> Alright. So now we have that. And we can grab this bezier here. And this one again. Just to round it just a little bit. I, I don't know. It's, it's not even important really. Because that's not even really the shape. I, I don't know. But. This is what we have. So um. I'm going to F3 again, and what I want to do is, um, I want to first take this out to the middle, make sure that's zeroed out, and zeroed out, because that's the core, and now I want to, I'll leave the edit vertex mode, and I want to use the lathe modifier, max, and now we have our shell, this was, this is, um, a quick way to make wine glasses or mugs or baseball bat whatever if you're familiar with real life lathes and how they work it's almost like a it's like an industrial version of um, a pottery wheel and they're not using hands and clay so uh, segments and I would raise up to make it smooth I don't want it to go well you know we don't have to make it smooth because you know what we're gonna be dropping these in the reactor and you don't want too many polys Especially in just a tutorial because you can experiment yourself. So, uh, lathe, we want to, where are you, weld the core, segments, everything else looks alright. So that would be our first shell. After that, you know, I would put an edit poly modifier on top of it. Because that collapses the stack without really collapsing the stack. And um, one last thing I would do is change the pivot point to the center of the object. And that would be the basics for our shell number one. And uh, when we come back, I'm going to show you another method of making it. So, um, yeah, we'll do it with a cylinder and we'll actually modify it. So join me again.